Our guest is Dr. Dino Patti Jalal. He's ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia to the United States. He's former presidential spokesperson and author of seven books, including the bestseller, The Can-Do Leadership. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, you invented a phrase called Remarkable Indonesia that they used in a lot of their branding and advertising. What's so remarkable about Indonesia? I think it's remarkable if you compare where we are today to where we were 12 years ago uh, after the crisis. Uh, you know, we experienced uh, minus 12% contraction of the economy. We had uh, riots in the streets. Uh, we had political instability. In four years between 1998 and 2001, we had four presidents and mm -hmm. so on and so on. And, and now our economy is the second highest growing in Asia after China. Mm -hmm. We're the second highest. We've been beat India. Uh, we have uh, democratic stability. Uh, we have uh, uh, elections, regular elections. Uh, we have national unity, peace in the streets and in our provinces. Mm -hmm. So it's quite remarkable how Indonesia has turned out after so many, uh, after there are people who said Indonesia would crumble down. Uh -huh. yeah. You said in one of your talks, uh, it's a different country, a different place, and in a different time. Huh? That's true. When I was in college, Dennis, uh, I, I used to call Indonesia third world because that's the term that was used. And to be honest, I didn't like it at the time because yeah. if you're on a train, there's first class passengers, second class, and then third class passengers. And as I said, we were third class passengers. Uh, but we used it at the time, 20, 20, 30 years ago. But now we don't use that. Uh, we use emerging economies, which is much more respectable yes. uh, term. So uh, there's a different mindset now guiding our country and especially guiding our uh, younger generation. We believe that we face a world not of threat, but a world of opportunities. Mm -hmm. And when you see the world as opportunity rather than a threat, uh, you see entirely yeah, different, yeah, yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, different world, absolutely. A different universe. Yeah. Let's uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, the country itself. It's absolutely vast. 17,000 islands, yes. uh, 243 million people, yes. uh, 580 some dialects and languages. Yes. How is it possible to keep it all functioning? Huh? Well, th and this is why Indonesia is a very interesting democratic experiment. Yes. And they used to believe, we used to believe uh, before the year, uh, before our democratic revolution, that Indonesia could not have a democracy. Because the argument was if you had democracy, the country is so diverse, it would break apart. Right? And this is the argument used by the previous uh, regimes to justify authoritarianism. Mm -hmm. But we prove exactly the opposite, that you can have democracy plus economic development plus national unity. The country became even more united after mm -hmm. we became uh, democratic. So, uh, you know, we've been, we've been uh, fortunate in that sense. I think this is the message that we want to tell other democratizing nations as well, that don't be afraid of democracy because despite all your diversity, a democracy can cement all that actually rather than break that apart. Mm -hmm. So uh, when they have a presidential election, mm -hmm. uh, and I guess the, the president that's there now will be there through uh, 2014? Uh, yes. Yeah, 14. Uh, what is his name? His name is SB, uh, Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono, but popularly known as SBY. SBY? I can say SBY. SBY is easier, yes. <laughs> That'd be okay. Um, when they have a national election, do they have a good turnout? Yes, our turnout is uh, always over 80%. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. very, very high. People it like, puts us to shame. Yeah, people like yeah, democracy, people like elections. Yeah. Why, yeah. Why, do, do they vote on the weekends or do, do they make it convenient? Here, if we get 50%, that's a big number. Yeah, and it's a holiday when it's an election. In, in it's a holiday. Yeah, yeah. See, that yeah. would bring people out as well. Yes. Oh, is, uh, what are the challenges the president faces? Well, number one is definitely poverty. Poverty, uh, but, yeah. a, but, but uh, how much? We, we have about, uh, about, in our definition of poverty, about uh, 30 to 40 million people who are living in less than uh, $2 a day. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But uh, at the same time, we have fast-growing middle class. We have the largest and la fastest-growing middle class in Southeast Asia, Dennis, mm -hmm. but still poverty. So now the challenge is really inequity. More people are getting richer, but the gap is growing. Uh -huh. right? So when you have uh, economic uh, inequity, then it leads, it leads to social inequity and potential instability. So mm -hmm. that is the challenge. How do you make the pie 
bigger, which is big, growing bigger, definitely, but how do you make it bigger for everyone else? Ah, and, uh, let me take a little break, uh, Ambassador. It's uh, pronounced Jalal. Jalal, yes. Jalal, Ambassador. It's uh, Dino? Dino, yes. Uh, Pati? Pati. Uh, Jalal. He's uh, the ambassador from the uh, Republic of Indonesia. Uh, just a treat to sit and talk with you. We'll take a little break. Back on the other side, this is America. This is America is brought to you by the National Education Association, the nation's largest advocate for children and public education. Poonsong Corporation, forging a higher global standard. The Republic of Kazakhstan in the heart of Eurasia. A rich history, a culture of hospitality, and a future of development and growth. The U.S.-China Education Trust and the F.Y. Chang Foundation. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. Mr. Ambassador, um, Tell us a little bit about the culture of, of Indonesia, some of the characteristics of the people, and how the, uh, the culture there might differ from other Asian countries. Well, Indonesia uh, is a crossroad uh, in terms of our location. Uh, we are between Asia and Australia, between Indian Ocean and Pacific Oceans. So we have all kinds of civilizations in Indonesia. We have uh, Hindu and Buddhist civilizations, mm -hmm. and then Islamic civilization ca came, and then Western civilization came. So our culture has been very open and very unique wow. in adapting to all, and wow. fusion of all these uh, uh, cultures. Uh -huh. And we, we are, as a result, we are known to be very open uh, and also very moderate. Uh, the form of Islam in Indonesia, for example, uh, is, is uh, quite moderate and gentle and soft because Islam came not by way of uh, military invasion, yes. but it came by way of trade. Yeah, so. Ah, so, so, so culture, the culture of the country uh, plays a big role in how Islam is interpreted uh, uh, in other countries and, and, as you say, in Indonesia as well. Huh? Absolutely, yes. Uh, 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 is it 90 percent of the country is uh, we are the largest uh, uh, Muslim population country in the world there are more Muslims in Indonesia than in the entire Middle East so in that way Indonesia is very strategic not just in the Islamic world but worldwide because th we live in a world whereby we still need to have bridges between the Western world and the Islamic world uh -huh. and Indonesia is well positioned uh, to help uh, uh, make build these bridges yeah. Uh, when when we uh, think of uh, Islam uh, here in the United States, quite often we see it as very uh, uh, rigid and uh, uh, maybe um, uh, some people might say um, uh, constricting uh, uh, women's rights and such like that. Your wife was here at, and who heads up the... Uh, the Islamic Women's Association, and she just painted a, a much different picture, and she made the point very clearly, culture of a country is, is really what, uh, what drives the interpretation. Absolutely right. Uh, Indonesia's brand of Islam is very unique, uh, uh, Dennis. Uh, we are moderate, uh, we are open, and we are very comfortable with democracy and modernity. Mm -hmm. So Islam, democracy, and modernity go hand in hand in Indonesia. And what is unique now in the minds of Indonesian Muslims is that in the past, we used to think that the center of the Islamic world is in uh, Mecca, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. And that remains true spiritually. But now, uh, we believe that uh, politically, economically, diplomatically, and socially, and culturally, it could be in other places, including in Indonesia. Wow. So spiritually, everybody prays towards Mecca, but political growth uh, in the Islamic world can be heavier elsewhere, including in Indonesia. Are there people... It's a secular government, though, right? Yes. Uh, 
uh, uniquely a dentist, uh, this is the only Muslim majority country that goes on holidays for uh, Christmas and for Easter. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, and you know, we all celebrate Christmas uh, uh, and, and you know, it's, it's very tolerant. Yeah. I'm gonna bring you, uh, I, I'm gonna present to you three stories mm -hmm. that Americans might know and I want you to, to, to use those stories to tell us about what's going on inside. One was the Lady Gaga mm. had to cancel a, con uh, a concert there mm. this past summer. That's one. Number two uh, was a story that I read about of uh, some area of the country wanted to have the women riding side saddle on motor scooters as opposed to straddling. Mm -hmm. the sc and the third thing, and, and also very uh, and serious, uh, or, or, or more serious is the arrest recently mm -hmm. of some uh, 11 uh, potential or, or terrorists. Mm -hmm. What are each one of those incidents saying about the country? I know I'm throwing a big lob sure. across the net, but you'll... I you'll... think there's a common threat, Dennis. Okay. I mean, Indonesia is one of the most transformative country in the 21st century. You know, how we move from authoritarianism to, to uh, open democracy. Yeah, um, and uh, the economic reforms and political reforms that have taken place are uh, have been so dramatic. Now, what happens is that as we move that fast, there's always a battle for the soul of Indonesia between those who are pro-reforms and those who are still conservative, who still, uh, you know, uh, are resistant towards change. Okay. And this is what the three cases that you see uh, reflect. You know, uh, these uh, incidences of of. Uh, uh, clash and friction between two competing forces in Indonesia. Mm. But fortunately, uh, in the last 12 years or so, the forces of reform uh, have uh, uh, been leading the country towards better change. Uh -huh. You say, um, so it's about uh, the freedoms that democracy uh, brings uh, in clash with uh, conservative, conservative uh, thinking, which uh, is, in my reading is correct maybe represents like a tenth of the population. Is that uh, Very right? minimal, yeah. Minimal? It's quite minimal, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the economy for a bit. Mm. Uh, hey, here's something I, I shouldn't say, hey, that's not, that's not respectful. That's I, I, I apologize. Um, the difference between Southeast Asia and East Asia. What we, what, what, get those clear in our minds, if you would. Well, uh, we talk about, uh, uh, well, Southeast Asia obviously is uh, the 10 uh, countries in Southeast Asia plus Timor-Leste uh, and these are the 10 countries in the ASEAN, the, the regional organization and that is to be differentiated uh, with uh, Northeast Asia uh, which is uh, China, Japan and uh, uh, North and South Korea uh, and also um, uh, Mongolia. Uh, but uh, I would say that East Asia encompasses uh, Southeast Asia as well as Northeast Asia. Ah. Yeah, so that's uh, East Asia and the Pacific. So the whole, the whole, yeah, yeah, yes. all of them. Yes, yeah. You are the uh, the driving economy, uh, the biggest economy in Southeast Asia. Is that we correct? are the biggest. We have crossed over one trillion dollar mark in terms of PPP purchasing power parity. And for us, Dennis, as a you know developing country, that's a big deal. It is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So what, what what are the what are the where's the economy based? How, how, how what what's driving the economy? Uh, there are three things. Uh, one is uh, domestic consumption. Okay. Uh, the, the Sounds other, like the United States. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, the other one is, uh, secondly, is uh, investment, and third is uh, trade. But uh, we are less dependent on trade than uh, other countries in Southeast Asia. And mostly, uh, we were able to withstand the financial crisis uh, in 2008 because we had a very strong domestic consumption. And so, so are you producing within the country a lot of the stuff that people want? Yes, or we are need, produce, yes, need? yes uh, we produce, but we also uh, import uh, uh, and uh, you know, we, we have good uh, uh, tr uh, trading uh, relations with, with many countries around the region. Who, who are the principal trading partners? Uh, China has become very big now. Yeah, In sure. fact, really, uh, t our trade with China, which used to be non-existent, has now almost doubled that of the United States. So China is become, becoming a quite... If China is aiming to be 50 billion with the United States, is about 26 billion now. Is China investing in uh, Indonesia? Not much. Trading more than investing. Trading. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 6% uh, growth? I, I... Six, and point, six and three percent. 6.3%. Well, 6.3%. <laughs> um, and so what are the major exports? 
uh, we export a lot of natural resources uh, f uh, from Indonesia. We produce uh, you have oil and gas oil and, and things gas. like that. Yeah, cocoa, uh, coal is big. Uh, uh -huh. Palm oil. We're the largest producers of palm oil in Indonesia. What in, is palm oil all about? Palm oil is uh, well, you plant the uh, the oil. Uh, you plant the palm oil tree and. Uh, but how's it used? How's palm oil it's used? It's used uh, for cooking. Uh, ah. it, and it can be used for energy, for uh, fuel as well. Wow. But for Indonesia, it's mostly for uh, for cooking. Uh -huh. yeah. How about how about tourism? Uh, you know, people know uh, Bali, I guess, uh, and, and Jakarta. Uh, and I want you to paint pictures of those. But uh, tourism is a big thing, isn't it? Tourism is a very big. Um, uh, although it's a it long can trip. Be bigger. It's a long trip. Yes. But it's but it's. I, I gather it would be worthwhile. Huh? Yeah. From, from here, it would be about 23 hours of traveling, uh, but we have one of the most diverse and exotic locations in the world. If, just see the, the movie Eat, Pray, and Love. Yes. In the end, they all, uh, she goes to Bali and finds happiness in <laughs> Bali. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, that describes Indonesia's scenery quite well. Yeah. Ah, so uh, t tell me, uh, like Jakarta, how, how many p uh, people? Jakarta, I think in the daytime, is about 12 million people. When you say in the daytime, do they go someplace at, at night? Nighttime, or they go they, back to the uh, other, to the suburbs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the suburbs. Yeah. But 12, 12, 12 million 12, people. Yeah, it's, it's it's quite a lot of pe uh, people. Do you think that the people in uh, Indonesia are they happy people? That's a very interesting question, Dennis. Because now uh, there's been some reports and studies recently that found that uh, Indonesians are generally happier than other places and other other nations. Uh, they may be poor. But because mm -hmm. of the values and social structures, uh, they you know they lead a happy life. Uh, of course, they'd be even better if they, they were more prosperous, and we're working at it. Yeah. But it's interesting that you say that. I won't say who I asked this question to, but I asked this of a prominent uh, leader of one of the Southeast Asian mm. companies if the people in his country uh, mm. were happy, and he and he paused for a minute. I think he was taken by the uh, by the question, and he said, mm, "I think the people in the Philippines are happier." Yeah. And but what I realized, because I've been to the Philippines, uh -huh. uh, people, as you say, in the poorer sections of the country, uh, they have their family, they have their church, they have their music. They have their culture. They have their one little roadside stand where they're selling, you know, the left pedal on a bicycle. Mm -hmm. That's all they sell. Uh -huh. Or they sell uh, some fruit or something by the side of the road. And their lives are very uh, uh, uncomplicated. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not they're not climbing all over each other to get someplace else. Huh? Yeah, I think what it is, then is, uh, I mean, I come from poor family, and I go to my villages a lot. I think the secret of happiness is not plenty, but simplicity. Uh, Simplicity. Yes, and and no matter how much money you have uh, or how poor you are, but uh, you know if you have a simple life, uh, the, the more likely you find you are to find uh, happiness. Yeah. I want to put two uh, serious subjects on the table. Uh, I remember uh, in 2004, I think it was uh, Bande Aceh. Mm -hmm. Is that the correct yes, pronunciation? Yes. Yes. Uh, earthquake, tsunami. Uh, how many people were killed? 200,000 in a half hour. 200,000 people. Yeah. Uh, that has to be a horror, and that is not mm -hmm. that long ago. Mm -hmm. But Indonesia has kind of set a standard for rebuilding mm -hmm. an area. Mm -hmm. is, that, is, yes. that, is that a fair thing to yes, say? Yes, absolutely. And uh, now it's uh, become a UN model. Uh, the UN has adopted uh, how we rebuild Aceh into Aceh. a model for Aceh. others. Yeah, Banda Aceh is the yeah. capital. Yeah. Yeah how to rebuild the disaster-stricken areas. And uh, yeah, it, was, it was one of the hardest things that we ever did for our nation. Yeah. What, does, what uh, horror uh, scars that still mm. uh, reside in people? Do people live in fear of tsunamis and earthquakes? Until now, yes. When, whenever there is an earthquake, they all uh, run uh, to the hills. Look at what happened in Japan. Exactly. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It, will, it will last for a generation, even more. But that, yeah. but is that the nature of just living there? It's kind of like the nature, like uh, uh, you know, if you live along the ocean in the United States, you know, there always can be a hurricane or something like that. Is that kind of true in Indonesia? There can always be an earthquake. There can always yes, be because we live in that uh, ring of fire, Dennis. And yeah. uh, throughout Indonesia, you know, we're used to seeing earthquakes, floods, and you know, uh, volcanoes and things like that. Uh, 
and uh, it's part of our national mindset. Actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. other thing I want to put on the table is terrorism. Mm. And there are bombings. Uh, Jakarta is one, and uh, Bali, Bali was, yeah. as, as well. And now this recent arrest of mm. some terrorists. Mm. And the targets can be Westerners, they can be United States, but also the own, their own government, your own government there. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, it's been uh, one of our uh, first priority in terms of national security. Uh -huh. uh, but fortunately, we have now a, a very good anti-terror police, and uh, it's said to be one of the most successful counter-terrorism programs in the world. Well, they got these people yes. very fast, yes. the, this 11, who are in the planning stages. Yes, yeah. And th the thing with these terrorist groups, uh, we have dismantled and, and arrested the key groups that did the Bali bomb and Jakarta bomb 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But these groups are very good in mutating. Uh, yeah. And so finding how they're mutated and how they're hiding, what kind of cells are... What's their goal? Uh, they, uh, if you ask them, uh, usually uh, to form an Islamic state. Uh, yes. Uh, but then, uh, you know, other groups have different goals. Yeah. What's the relationship between Indonesia and the United States? Very good now. Now uh -huh. it's at its best. Uh, before it used to be ups and down, uh -huh. uh, but now we have what is called comprehensive partnership. Uh, it's a signed declaration between the President of Indonesia and President of the United States uh, uh -huh. under President Barack Obama. Uh -huh. And uh, it commits the two countries to a relationship where they agree that this is a strategic partnership. Uh -huh. And the oldest democracy in the world, and one of the largest, the third largest democracy in in, in the world. And we've shifted our uh, focus, our foreign policy focus, to that part of the world. Huh? Yes, uh, it used to be one. Uh, it used to be single issue interests, Dennis. It used to be just focus on one issue, which is uh, human rights issues. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a lot of problems in the past, and mm -hmm. but now it's a lot more broad, uh, broad economic, technological, energy, environment, and so on. You know, so mm. it's more comprehensive. Yeah. People uh, may not know this, but you have won so many awards and been so recognized for uh, activities and initiatives that you've uh, fostered to bring people together, to bring cultures together, to bring religions together. What's your mission? Uh, well, it's fu uh, funny because I think uh, when I become ambassador now, I, I realized that the, the diplomatic training that I received 20 years ago mm -hmm. did not equip me to become the kind of ambassador I should be today. Uh, I think uh, half of my work are diplomatic and the other half is uh, really non-diplomatic. This is why I have a concept at the embassy which is how to become a hybrid, hyper, and hip diplomat. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. And, uh, You're very committed to young people, aren't yes, you? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Youth is important, and yeah. and you think of them as really, everybody mouths this, you know, they're the leaders of tomorrow, but you really put your money where the mouth is, right? Yes, well, it's the young people now who are changing the world. Uh, I tell young people now that uh, success is getting younger. You can really become somebody at the age of 20 or 30, mm -hmm. and yeah, you yeah, can yeah. achieve what you want to achieve. Uh, uh, as an individual, a lot more than, than uh, say, two generations ago, you know. Generation 21, a television program of young people coming together. Is it popular? Oh, yes. I, I love that program. I mean, this is the one program where we sought the young icons from Asia-Pacific countries, and we put them together. We asked them uh, difficult questions, you know. Do you think there will be, there's going to be World War III? Yeah. Do you like nationalism? Do you like globalization? And all have, all have different answers. And for them to find out how different the answers could be from one another is, is a great experiment. Uh, born in Belgrade, was here in McLean. I studied here. When you were a youngster washing dishes at the embassy, is that right? I was and a dishwasher janitor? and, and a janitor, a janitor at, at, the at the embassy, embassy? where I'm now ambassador. You're That's the, the American em dream. That's well, yeah, that is the American dream. <laughs> I tell my dream. kids that they don't believe me. Yeah. I, gotta, I, I wish somebody had taken pictures back then. You know, yeah. S studied in Canada I studied in and Canada. also uh, in, uh, in but, England, yeah. where you got your doctorate. Doctorate in what? International Affairs. International Affairs. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. We're coming to the end of our time. Uh, you have a lovely wife. Uh, youngsters, three, three uh, young, kids, yeah. youngsters, uh, very involved in sports. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, one favorite? Uh, I like running and running. basketball. Yeah. Running and basketball. Yeah. You came to the right country. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Uh, you've written seven books. Uh -huh. The one that I focused in on is on leadership. Mm -hmm. Sold 1.7 million copies. Yes, in Indonesia. Yeah. Yeah. So, what are the qualities of a good leader? A leader has to be someone who knows where to take his followers to. 
so he has to have a sense of where to go and when, where to bring his organization or his movement. Uh, I think that sense of direction, I think, is most important. Uh, otherwise, uh, that leader becomes just a ruler or a pres presider rather than a leader. We have 30 seconds left. Of all the things you've done, put them all together, what's the most important lesson you've learned in your life so far? Take risks, uh, seize opportunities, and uh, be courage. There's a sign on my wall that says, uh, if you believe in nothing and stand up for nothing, you will achieve and become nothing. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Thank Ambassador. You, what a terrific education you've given us. Uh, thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure for me and for Indonesia. And we'll be coming there someday. Uh, anytime. Thank anytime. you. For information about my new book, The Chance of a Lifetime, and online video for all This Is America programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net. And now you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. This is America is brought to you by the National Education Association, the nation's largest advocate for children and public education. Poonsong Corporation, forging a higher global standard. The Republic of Kazakhstan in the heart of Eurasia, a rich history, a culture of hospitality, and a future of development and growth. The U.S.-China Education Trust and the F.Y. Chang Foundation. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. The Rotondaro Family Trust, the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings.